Now, it has been a moment uh, since I last talked about Turnip 28. And the last time I talked about it, I talked about the setting as opposed to the game itself. And I will still be talking about how much I like the game itself in a future review when the campaign comes out. But one thing I have also done in these past few months is play through the Silver Bayonet. I first talked about it on my podcast, and soon after I gave it a go, I played through the solo scenarios. And one thing that stood out to me, as I'm sure most people interested in Turnip 28 were thinking, is that this could be, effectively, a way to play Turnip 28 a Skirmish. So, with the Five Leagues review still pending and the content treadmill ever hungry for more, I decided that I would be making a mod for the Silver Bayonet. A mod that would let you play your Turnip 28 miniatures. In that skirmish scale. Now please note this is not a review video for the Silver Bayonet. You may be able to glean what I feel about the system as we go through this video, but I have not played it holistically and I have not played it adversarially. I have only played it in the solo context. To kick off this entire process, I first played through the Silver Bayonet. Now this did not take long at all because there are only four solo scenarios. The Silver Bayonet as a solo game, well the book only comes with four scenarios. Now the problem is, with these four scenarios you will not be able to go through the game's progression systems properly. So in this regard, the Silver Bayonet core book can be a little bit frustrating because there is such a uh, lack of solo content going on there. You play through the four, and that'll be it. Once I got my head around how the Silver Bayonet worked, I started modifying it to better suit the world of Turnip 28. This mod will be solo facing and the campaign will be written for solo co-op play. You can play it adversarially, but it has not been tested for that purpose. At first, this mod was going to be a simple reskin. My initial plan was to take some of the soldiers from the Silver Bayonet and then stick Turnip 28 names on them to keep it simple. From there, I could work on restructuring the campaign into something more interesting. However, I changed my mind as soon as I collated and lined up the Silver Bayonet's stats. Now, the stats as they are for the Silver Bayonet, they're just fine. They're configured quite well, the rolling is quite nice. But for Turnip 28, I did not want it to feel like the Silver Bayonet. See, one of the main themes with Turnip 28 is just the sheer miserableness of the setting. The incompetence of your followers. So given the stat lines of the Silver Bayonet, I didn't think like even just at a glance that this was something communicated. So I knew that I had to adjust the stat lines into something a little bit more appropriate. Additionally, knowing how the base game behaved, I knew that the stat lines on the soldiers would not make the game nearly as miserable as I wanted it to be. The base game of Turnip 28 is not about commanding a regiment of trained soldiers, it is about pushing forward a group of miserable cretins into a fight that they are woefully unprepared for. And the rolling has to reflect that. If it means that the followers would miss their shots more than you'd expect out of a skirmish game, then that's fine. If it's for the sake of the mood, we can find other ways to make the system engaging. It doesn't always have to be about killing the other thing. It doesn't always have to be a power fantasy. I ended up writing entirely new stat entries for every Turnip 28 unit I wanted in the mod built off a new stats baseline. To come to this baseline, I basically started at a hit percentage and then I figured out the numbers I needed on the statistics to get to that percentage. For my dice math, I use this app called Sophie's Dice, which is a very cool dice rolling app, but it also lets you use some very customized macros to make a few rolls, which it will then present as a very tidy dataset. It is quite a good app. I'll put the links in the description. Long story short, the new attack baseline for the mod was a defense stat of 11 and an unmodified attack stat of plus 0. 
in the Silver Bayonet, the damage range of a successful attack is 1 to 10. That means that your typical soldier would maybe go down in 2 hits. I wanted to bump that down to 1 hit. I wanted the system to be a bit more lethal. So I also adjust the baseline health down to 6. I set the baseline courage down to 0, we will get back to that stat later. And summing all that up, we come down with the new baseline stat template which we will use for the father type of follower. From this template, I now had a point of reference on which to build the rest of the mod. Before I could write up the rest of the new units, I had to make some changes to Silver Bayonet's core engine. Since I would be replacing all of the soldiers, I decided to also recontextualize all of the equipment. I made it so weapons are now a separate loadout option instead of a subset of equipment, and I replaced basically all of Silver Bayonet's default equipment choices. Going through the solo campaigns of the Silver Bayonet, one of the things I picked up on was how it would use the equipment and loadout preparation to ramp up the complexity. The Silver Bayonet is ostensibly Napoleonic horror. Now it is absolutely that, but it is also a monster hunting game. And in mainstream media, a monster hunting game usually means a game that has prep, a game that has contextual scenarios that you need to be prepared for in order to succeed. And that is absolutely something that Silver Bayonet goes for. This is interesting design, but it's not necessarily something I wanted for the Turnip 28 mod, at least not in terms of the complexity. I did not want the complexity to come out of equipment selection. There are now only three weapon loadouts, based off the ones found in Turnip 28. Reloading no longer has an equipment requirement and your followers can always reload, provided their weapon requires it. Shooting and moving to attack is now also limited to targets closest to the activating model, a huge component in the strategy of Turnip 28. Finally, we also make it so that every model can only ever have one piece of equipment. This brings us to the next set of mechanics up for deliberation. The Silver Bayonet has quite a bit of meter management. It is a game that uses HP, which goes up and down across the round. It uses activation, which is a binary state, a figure has either activated or it hasn't. It uses fatigue, which figures get when they go into melee combat. The fatigue debuffs them and they can have up to two. It uses reload markers extensively across a round. And it uses debuffs from the terror system. There is quite a few things to keep track of. Now, from my playthrough of the solo scenarios, I did find that this could be a little too much bookkeeping. See, the thing with solo is you are the only person playing. You are not taking turns, of course. So it is quite easy for a system that has a lot of data to become overwhelming. And I do think that Silver Bayonet pushes a little bit too far in that regard, especially given all the equipment and given all the meter tracking. For a while, I was on the fence over removing fatigue entirely. I also trialed automatic reloading at the start of the turn to try and alleviate needing so many markers. But I eventually settled on keeping everything because it just added more to the depth of the experience. What I did settle on was one thing. There is no healing in the mod. If damage is dealt within a scenario, it is more or less permanent until the scenario ends. When I was going over the Silver Bayonet's terror systems, I knew I was going to replace it. The biggest factor here is how the terror system isn't nearly as baked into the core engine as the other systems are. It's something that's layered on top, often situationally, depending on the monster you are fighting. Terror isn't always there. Also, it deals in a lot of debuffs, which I'm not a fan of. As I said before, the system's already quite bookkeepy. So I ended up writing an entirely new system, the Panic System, which is based off the Panic System in Turnip 28. The Panic System in the mod affects all of your figures. Like Turnip 28, it ties into running away and will fluctuate across a scenario depending on your interactions. 
besides the new fleeing rules, I've also tied it into a lot of the specific follower rules and special abilities as well as the new rules for dangerous terrain checks. Dealing with panic is where the Courage stat comes back into play. The Courage stat modifies all roles involved with panic and works off the same kind of baseline math as the others. The standard turn 28 follower is, of course, not that courageous. With all the moving parts in place, I could now hunker down and start writing the rest of the follower rules. I wanted the rules to say informed by turn of 28 in terms of relative HP differences, differences in stats, and their specific combat roles. Now, so here's the thing about these uh, turn of 28 models. You will spend a lot of time making these. Most turn of 28 models are heavily converted. A lot of them have a personal investment in creativity that is just not present in other war games. This sort of thing is actively encouraged by the Turnip 28 book and by the Turnip 28 style. So when a system does that, you have to respect the work that the players have put into their models. So what I'm saying is that I wanted everything in the Turnip 28 core book to be fieldable in the mod. And that is not just limited to artillery. I wanted you to be able to take a balloon in if you wanted to. So I ended up translating pretty much all of the Turnip 28 units into the Silver Bayonet mod. After the backbone units were written up, I put them on the table, on the virtual table and the real table, and started rolling dice just to get a feel for them, and I adjusted stats accordingly here and there. And then I just got to writing the rest of them. And once the units were done, the cults took a surprisingly short amount of time to write. There were challenges here and there, Todd's Folly and the Uprising of the Laos in particular took a bit of a brainstorming to make mechanics for. But I ended up making my own take on all of the cults for any aspiring toffs to try out at the skirmish scale. And at around that stage was also when I decided to name the mod. And so that is the end of part one. I do want to finish this within the month. I have written most of it up, actually. So it's just a matter of presenting it to people and also getting the PDF in order so that people can download it and play. And I do want it to be playable. When I put this up, I want you to be able to sit down one afternoon and play through most, if not all of it, either by yourself or with a friend. Ideally, with a friend. But for now, we are stopping there. We have talked about the core engine. We have talked about the units. Next time, we are going to talk about what is arguably the more important part, the campaign and the scenarios and the progression. And yes, that is my return to YouTube after a couple months off because of uh, reasons various. I would have preferred to have kept pumping out videos to appease the algorithm, but that was not the case. In the interim, I am happy to report that I have started up a Patreon. You can see the names of my patrons scrolling up right now. I thank all of you for the support, in particular the fellas in the Laser Cultist tier. Brandon Fraley, Gregory Gonzalez, John Hammer, Old Paul, and Russell Brown. All of you guys are a massive help to the channel. And that is us for part one, folks. Keep an eye out for part two. Until next time.